Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Instructions for British Servicemen in France, 1944. Reproduced from the original, prepared by the Political Warfare Executive and issued by the Foreign Office London. So this is like a facsimile almost of what was given out to soldiers. It's published by the Bodleian Library of the University of Oxford, and I picked it up from Bletchley Park when I went to visit there. And we have, we don't exactly have a blurb of such, but we have these quotes on the back. So I'm going to read you these quotes, go through it and check out, check out my tabs, and then share my thoughts and rating at the end. So the three quotes... If you should happen to imagine that the first pretty French girl who smiles at you and tends to dance the can-can or take you to bed, you will risk stirring up a lot of trouble for yourself and for our relations with, with the, and for our relations with the French. Don't drink yourself silly. If you get the chance to drink wine, learn to take it. The French are more polite than most of us. Remember to call them Monsieur, Madame, Mademoiselle, not just Oi. Classy Englishman. So um, th there's a section here on what occupation has meant, which I'm going to read out. It says, uh, remember that continental France has been directly occupied. In consequence, it has been stripped of everything by the Germans. Almost all French civilians, including French children, are undernourished, and many have died from exhaustion and hunger because the Germans have eaten the food. The Germans have also drunk the wine or distilled it into engine fuel, so there are only empty barrels to roll. You have known something of rationing at home and seen temporary shortages of various things to which you were accustomed. But you have never known, as the French, thanks to the Germans, have known, a lasting dearth of the commonest articles. Food, drink, clothes, tobacco. Everything has been rationed, but to have a coupon is not meant to get even the meagre ration. Women have queued up daily for vegetables from 4 in the morning till the market closed at 8.30, and gone away without any because the Germans had robbed the lorries on the way. Bread has also often been unobtainable, and often nearly uneatable. There have been minute rations of a soap which will not wash. Simple necessities like bandages or baby foods or condensed milk have been unobtainable. Cigarettes have been rationed to three a day, when they were available at all. The towns have suffered worse, but the country districts have not escaped lightly. Short or non-existent rations have, of course, been supplemented by black market activities. Some of the activities have been designed to keep food out of German hands and have had general approval of patriotic Frenchmen. Others have amounted to black market selling and buying as we know it for the benefit of profiteers and those with enough money to buy at the expense of the poorer countrymen. We have a fact here. Each year, at least 5,000 Frenchmen have been shot for active resistance, one every two hours. This includes anything from derailing a German troop train to helping British soldiers or airmen escape. I thought this was interesting too because um, it doesn't accuse the Germans of being, you know, improper or whatever. So it says, um, Indeed, we have reason to show even greater consideration, for the individual German soldier in France has been outwardly very correct on the strictest orders. He almost overbalanced, at least at the beginning, in his contortions to appear friendly, but without thereby winning the regard of the French. We owe it to our self-respect as British soldiers to show ourselves really well behaved in every way, but we, unlike the Germans, can be naturally friendly, seeing that the French are naturally our friends. <coughs> Waterloo! Uh, 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 uh. Uh, this was quite interesting, it's uh, the makings of France, it says, British history begins with a succession of invasions from abroad. Since 1066, no one has ever invaded our island. In France, which is not an island, the invasions have continued to our own times, and the 1940 invasion was the third within living memory. That is one reason why the French, starting not unlike ourselves, have developed rather differently. I thought this was funny. It says, The long wars with England and the recurrent invasions from our side of the Channel have left the modern Frenchman with no grudge against us, except perhaps for the burning of Joan of Arc. And uh, the, so the French national slogan or whatever is, uh, a liberté, égalité, fraternité, and uh, it says, Of the original slogan of the French Revolution, liberty and equality have never ceased to preoccupy Frenchmen, often at the expense of national fraternity. And I enjoyed this because uh, it talks about French patois as well. It says, What are the French people like? Frenchmen have, of course, a strong national feeling, a pride in being as a united France, so long a dominant force in Europe. But you may also notice among them a regional loyalty to the part of France from which they come. This regionalism is partly derived from the old separate feudal principalities and dukedoms, partly from racial differences. For the French nation includes other groups as distinct from each other as the Bretons and Normans. For instance, the Basques of the southwest, who have a peculiar language of their own, the Catalans at the other end of the Pyrenees, and the people of Provence, inland from Marseille. Even in those parts of France which have not a separate language of their own, there is usually a, re there is usually a regional dialect called a patois, which the peasants prefer to speak rather than the French of their grammar books. And it says at the bottom, they understand good French nonetheless. So I thought this was quite telling as well. Uh, by and large, Frenchmen, whatever their income or job, are inclined to what we would call a middle class view of life. They are outwardly politer than most of us and they enjoy an intellectual argument more than we do. You will often think that two Frenchmen are having a violent quarrel when they are simply arguing some abstract point. The excitement is all on the surface. 
Fundamentally, they are at least as tolerant as ourselves. The French, however, are not tolerant of authority, as the Germans have found to their cost. Their first reaction to a uniform or a regulation is not to obey unquestioningly, but rather to ask whether it is necessary and make disrespectful comments if they decide it is not. This is all part of the Frenchman's deep belief in the individual. He is convinced of his right to think for himself and voice his criticisms aloud. And um, there's a note here about the French language talking about like religion. It says, It is somewhat confusing for us that the vicar is called the curé and the curé is called the vicaire. But the problem is, I don't know what a curé and a vicar are anyway. Like, what's the difference? This is interesting too, under family life. Thanks to jokes about gay Paris, French farce and pictures from Paris, there is a fairly widespread belief among people in Britain that the French are a particularly gay, frivolous people with no morals and few convictions. This is especially untrue at the present time, when the French have been living a life of hardship and suffering. But the idea of the French living in a glorious orgy of wine, women and song never was true, even before the war. The French drink wine as we drink beer. It is the national drink and a very good drink, but there was far less drunkenness in peacetime France than in peacetime England. I'm going to read some more of this as well actually. It says, not like Montmartre. It is also as well to drop any ideas about French women based on stories of Montmartre and nude cabaret shows. There were always... These were always designed as a tourist attraction for foreigners. In Paris, in peacetime, one saw far more British and American and Germans than Frenchmen at the famous Folie Bergères. If you should happen to imagine that the first pretty French girl who smiles at you intends to dance the can-can or take you to bed, you will risk stirring up a lot of trouble for yourself and for our relations with the French. So that's from the rear cover. Like us, the French are on the whole a conventional people, but it happens that their conventions differ in some respects from ours. Some British peacetime visitors to France were shocked to find that the French had licensed brothels. Well, French visitors to Britain have sometimes been equally shocked by couples lovemaking publicly in our parks. The men may relieve nature rather openly in public and see little harm in frankness on various matters, but French people are rather startled when they hear a music hall comedian in this country joking about Nancy boys, or see some of us with drink taken, badly out of control. We are not the only nation to feel more virtuous than our neighbours, or to criticise their morals. The French do the same with regard to us. It is perhaps characteristic that what we call taking French leave, the French call filière l'anglaise. I thought this was interesting too. I'm assuming this has changed since obviously this was written, but I don't know. Uh, French law. Beside being France's greatest military genius, Napoleon was also her greatest lawgiver. The code of laws which he established, the Code Napoleon, lasted in France with amendments through the 19th century and left a great mark on many of the legal systems of Europe. It outlived two monarchies, the Second Republic, the Second Empire and the Third Republic. Napoleon's system of laws is nominally in force even today. The quizzling government of Vichy has never dared openly to attack or revoke it, though in fact it ignores many of its provisions. It says here, uh, your own life in the country, drink. In most parts of France, you should boil all drinking water, whether from a trap, whether from a tap, a well, a stream or a spring, unless your own MO tells you the contrary. Fresh milk you will not get at all. The French have not enough for their children. Tea, never widely drunk in France, is completely lacking, except for what the British and Americans may bring. Coffee is now almost wholly lacking. And I, I thought this was interesting, this is about French women. French women, both young and old, are far from shy and you will, if you are a man of sense, make them your friends. But do not mistake friendship for willingness to give you their favours. The same sort of girl with whom you can take liberties in England can be found in France. And the same sort of girl whom you would grossly offend in this country would be greatly offended if you were to try anything on in France. The fathers, brothers and fiancés of French girls will often be unable to protect them because they are fighting the Germans or have been deported to Germany. Apart from any question of discipline, you are on your honour to behave to their womenfolk as you would wish them to behave to yours. If you do not, you will injure the reputation of the British soldier by showing a worse example than the Germans, who at the start, at least, behaved with considerable restraint, though they later lapsed. As for the loose women, if you have noted the facts on page 7 about the prevalence of VD, you will see good reasons for avoiding them. And also, um, not many people know this, but when the Germans were retreating across Europe, they basically released a bunch of imprisoned prostitutes with venereal disease in the hope that the invading army would sleep with them and catch crabs and shit and syphilis and all that. This was interesting too, it says, uh, The rule of the road, you drive on the right of the road and not on the left. The main roads are straight and good, the side roads are variable as our own. France today, thanks to the Germans, contains an undue proportion of the very old and the very young. The able-bodied have been largely deported. So do not drive through French towns and villages at a rate which... So do not drive through French towns and villages at a rate which means the inhabitants skipping out of your way. They may not be able to do so. And I'm going to read these out, these are the do's. The French are our friends, the Germans are our enemies and the enemies of France. Remember that the Germans individually often behaved well in France. We have got to behave better. We are helping to free France. 
Thousands of Frenchmen have been shot in France for keeping alive the spirit of freedom. Let the French know that you realise the great part Frenchmen have played, both in the last war and in this war. The French are more polite than most of us. Remember to call them Monsieur, Madame, Mademoiselle, not just Oi. Be patient if you find a Frenchman hard to understand. He is having difficulties too. Remember to salute a French civilian or policeman when you address them. This is a normal form of politeness practiced by the French. Salute when entering and leaving a private house, a cafe or a shop. Be natural, but don't make yourself too much at home till you are sure your French friends like it. Remember the intense suffering of the French since 1940. Make allowances for this. So all in all, probably as you can tell, I did enjoy instructions for British servicemen in France, uh, 1944. I would give this a pretty solid four out of five and would recommend it to you if you're interested in either French culture or the Second World War, um, or even just, yeah, I guess like history in general and stuff. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So there we have it, that's what I made of instructions for British servicemen in France 1944 by the Bodleian Library of the University of Oxford. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.